Let's stick with the airspace uh, space. Our next guest says one aircraft leasing company could be ready for takeoff. Franklin Templeton's Katrina Dudley joins us now for a fast pitch. So Katrina, you're taking a look at AirCap. What do you like about it? Look, it's a $9 billion Irish-based aircraft leasing. And in this type of business, the company doubled its scale last year when it acquired the GCAS leasing business. And this is a business where scale and economies of scale really matter. Um, when you get big, you become more important to your airline customers and you have a much more diversified fleet you can offer to lease to them. And you also become much more important to the aircraft manufacturers. And that's important, particularly when we're supply constrained. Um, if we take a look at their balance, Balance sheet. Yes, they have debt. It's secured debt. It's it's debt that's levered. It's against a secured asset that they're renting out and earning really good yields on. And then finally. AirCap is really well positioned in terms of it has a young fleet and it has 460 new orders of aircraft and 90% of those are highly new technology aircraft and they're the aircraft that these airlines need. So you talk about what happened today at United, we are really positive about those capacity cuts to the extent that airline capacity is scarcer. A lot of the airline cuts have been in the regional part of the market and that's not where AirCap plays. They play in the narrow bodies, they play a bit in the wide bodies, but they are a really good partner to these airlines. And to the extent the airlines have had a rough time over the last couple of years, particularly post the pandemic, um, those losses on their balance sheet mean that they cannot raise further debt that they need to invest in their fleet in order to reduce the emissions and deliver the excess capacity to their customers. And that's where aircraft leasing comes in. So we think it's a great space. Talk about valuation. You may be talking about United United Airlines trading cheap. I've got a secured airline business that we think can earn, you know, low to mid teens ROE that's trading at 65% of its book value. We see the stock as an easy double. And if you want to get optimistic and we see a little bit of multiple appreciation to say 1.2 times book, this thing's a triple in the next three years, which is why we like AirCap. Hi, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. Hey, I love the accent, by the way. So the question, though, <laughs> is, do you, how much exposure do they have to the sort of net jets and those kind of businesses, which seem to me to have uh, peaked in terms of the demand for airlines and, and used aircraft coming onto the market? What's your exposure there? So the, 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 they play in the newer part of the aircraft fleet. They don't play in the private jet fleet. Um, so they're not exposed to those net jets. Actually, what's going to happen is those private travelers are more likely to come back into the commercial market. Um, and so that would benefit the airlines and it benefits AirCap as a derivative. So we're not worried about that. Um, the other space where AirCap plays, and it's kind of the hidden gem that they got from GE is in the helicopter space. And with the rising commodity prices, is you're seeing a lot more demand for that product. And that's another you know, part of the story that's really overlooked. Katrina, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having Katrina me. Katrina Dudley. All right, it's time to vote. Are you going to buy Katrina's pitch on air cap? Guy, what do you say? So I'm going to turn my smart board around. For me, this is a smart board, as you know. And I'll say that on May 17th, you go back and look at that quarter. It was actually an extraordinary quarter. It was not rewarded. Stock has effectively been cut in half since January highs. I like what she's pitching there, Melms. Dan? Uh, not my ballywick, and, and I'm not a buyer. You know, she talked about all that debt here, and this is a $9 billion, um, you know, equity value. It's got a billion and change in uh, cash, but it's got nearly $49 billion in debt. And she said it's all secured. I get it. She knows this company inside and out. I'm just saying in this environment, I'm not sure that's particularly interesting to me, if you think there's potentially credit issues on the offering. Karen? Well, when I heard the word air, I thought, no way would I like it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I didn't hate it. So I don't know. I passed, but I thought it was a good pitch. Interesting. I like the detail. I like the pitch, but it's not for me. So you like the pitch, but you pass on the stock. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Tim? Uh, look, I love the Irish, and, and I'm a buyer. <laughs> and, and ultimately, what I heard are a couple things. First of all, that, my guy refers to that May quarter. Those are great numbers. They took an impairment charge. They talked about actually demand in the Twin Isle planes. Uh, and I actually think that this is a stock that's been totally nailed because people are worried about the low capital cost environment changing. Their business hasn't changed. It's very cheap here. 